Hi, I am Alan Rich. Welcome to TV Jesus Christ on the show Rooted in the Bible. We are in a message uh, that uh, we are talking about repentance and how to be free from any bondage and from sin. So we are in the last part of repentance. Uh, please, if you have missed any show, uh, go to tvjesuschrist.com, to the archives, to, see, to understand the context. So I'm, con I'm uh, continuing exactly where we left uh, last week. We saw that uh, uh, John the Baptist, Jesus Christ and the disciple uh, have preached the repentance and Jesus asked us to preach the gospel of repentance. Now we're going to see that now that you know what repentance is, that God wants you to repent. In 2 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 9 to 10, Paul said, Now I rejoice, not that you were made sorry, but that your sorrow led to repentance. For you were made sorry in a godly manner, so that you might suffer loss from us in nothing. For godly sorrow produces repentance leading to salvation, not to be regretted, but the sorrow of the world produced death. So you see that the sorrow in the process of repentance leads you to salvation, to be set free, to be saved from all the burden that you have, from all the bondage under uh, which you are. We, we, we see here that in the repentance there must be sorrow, you, me, you must f feel sorry. As I say, repentance is not a, a shallow process, it's not just, oops, I did, oh, oh, it's not good, oh, sorry God, oops, I won't do it again. You must cry out to God, you must, you know, feel sorry, but this will lead to salvation. It means to reconstruction. Amen. Uh, God wants you to repent because without repentance there is no salvation. Without repentance there is no deliverance. Without repentance there, there is no healing. We see in 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 25 to 26. Uh, you know to correct the, the people. Uh, like in humility, correcting, correcting those who are in opposition, if God perhaps will grant them repentance, so that they may know the truth, amen, and that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. This is very important. Note that verse 2 Timothy 2, 25-26. Already we see that, he said, we hope that God will grant repentance. It's a gift, it's a grace to be able to repent. And we must not mock God because one day maybe our heart will be so hard that we want to repent and we won't be able to. Of course we will be able to say, oh I did wrong, oops. But to repent deeply we won't be able. And he said, we, we, we pray that God will grant them repentance. Why? So that they may know the truth. Repentance leads to know the truth. And truth will make you free, will set you free. Amen? And truth will make them come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. If you are taken in the snare of the devil, the devil has taken you into his claws to make, make you do his will. And you are slave of him. You know? And to get out, to escape from the, the, the snare of the devil, where you are captive, 
You have to know the truth. You have to get understanding and knowledge. And understanding of and knowledge is through repentance. That is why I spent so many weeks in, on this message talking about repentance. <coughs> and maybe some of you, you have skipped some uh, message or think, oh, he's talking too much. Why so, so long about repentance? Because this is what will make you free. And this is what will lead you to know the truth and to escape from the snare of the devil and to stop being captive from the devil or from any sin. Amen? God wants you to repent in Romans chapter 2 verse 4. Do you despise the riches of God's goodness, <coughs> forbearance and long-suffering? Not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance. Amen. In uh, 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 9, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, and some as some count slackness, but his long suffering toward you, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God wants us all to come to repentance. God wants you to come to repentance. Now that you know better about repentance, maybe in the beginning of the messages, if I would have asked you, have you repent? You, maybe you, you would have said yes, because you were thinking something about repentance. But now that you know what is repentance, I'm asking you again, have you repented from all your sins, from your past sins before you were converted? and you came to Christ, but also since you were a Christian or now in your life if, if you're under the bondage of a sin. God wants you to repent because in Luke 13, 3, He said, I tell you, unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. And God does not want you to perish. God does not want you to live a, a life of sin or a life of bondage. And to be free from bondage, you need to repent. You must also, of course, forgive a, a brother or a sister who repents, who has done something to you, who has done something in Luke 17, 3, if your brother sins against you. Rebuke him, and if he repents, forgive him. Amen. And we are concluding uh, today uh, in this message, uh, repentance. We are going to see, once you have done this repentance, what is the next step? The next step is that when you have repented, according to the Bible and according to the Word of God, you can receive the power of God, you can receive the Spirit of God, you can uh, receive something new in your life. So, of course, when you are non-Christian and you come to Jesus, it's once you have repented that you can be baptized in the Holy Spirit. But when you are a Christian, and you have already the Holy Spirit, but you have sinned or you are far away from God and you feel like a, um, a dry, or you don't have the blessing that you had before, you don't have the light, you, don't, you feel God is far away. Well, refreshing time will come back, the Spirit of God will come back and all will start again. We can see <coughs> This in the book of Acts, chapter 3, verse 19 to 20. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Amen. And that he may send Jesus Christ, who was preached to you before. If you repent, if you convert, because convert is turning your way. Huh? You repent, that means... I'm doing wrong, I'm doing that way. Now if I repent and I do all the points we've seen, I regret, I confess, and I turn away, this is repentance, that means I am converted. 
I have converted my way uh, 180, 180 degrees. Okay? So repent and convert that your sin may be blotted out. So if you repent and convert, your sin will be blotted out. If you repent and convert, those times of refreshing may come again. Those times of refreshing you have been waiting for, they will come back. In Acts, also chapter 2, verse 38, Peter said, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remissions of the sin, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As I say, if you do not, do not have the Holy Spirit, by repentance you, you can receive the Holy Spirit. But if you have already the Holy Spirit, but you are far from God, you will, the Holy Spirit will be able to come again and to grow again and to give you all the blessings that you knew before. Amen. The last uh, verse we're going to see as an introduction for next week where we're going to speak now about the power of the Holy Spirit and how to use it and what to do to get completely free from your bondage. In Matthew chapter 3, verse 11, uh, Jesus, uh, John the Baptist said, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he who is coming after me, Jesus Christ, is mightier than I, whose sandals I'm not worthy to carry. He, Jesus, will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Amen. Glory to God. I am Evangelist Alan Rich, you are on TV Jesus Christ and uh, I uh, see you next week on the new show of Rooted in the Bible. Bye bye.